going to get a little creative here. See, when this event was live, we were so taken in by the moment that we missed recording the intro, including a great performance by singer-songwriter Jody Rafool. This guy, he was fabulous, by the way. And although I can't go back in time, I can speed it up. See, that's me up there at the podium. So let me just fast forward myself so you can get to the good stuff sooner. One of my favorite teachers and authors is John Maxwell. He says that when you have shifted from good intentions to intentional living, whenever you detect a need that matters to you, you no longer think something must be done about that. Instead, you think I must do something about that. Our region has one of the highest unemployment rates in Canada. It weighs heavy on us and our sense of community. So this is just part of what I think must be done. There's much more. But this was a gathering with the intention to inspire people to find a way through the sharing of stories and experiences to pick this region up and to create a contagious type of energy that propels us all forward. And for the purposes of this particular event, it started with the likes of Ari Freed and in the sharing of his story of success, the story of the thriving Freed's brand in spite of the unique challenges that come with today's global retail industry. They're making it happen. And so can you. I said a lot of other things that morning. I digress. Here's Mr. Dan Orman, longtime business partner of Ari's at Freed's with his formal keynote introduction. Enjoy and thank you. Good morning, everyone. What a terrific turnout. My name is Dan Orman, and I am thrilled to be here to introduce Ari Freed as he shares his story of challenge and success for the purpose of helping to further elevate the business community of our city, Windsor. The truth is, I have spent my whole professional career working alongside Ari as his business partner. So I'm also excited to hear his take on our joint history. But Ari is here because he's an ongoing practitioner of our business. He constantly monitors how we can improve who we are, how we can better portray ourselves, and most importantly, how we can make each and every individual that comes into our store look and feel as best as he or she possibly can. Ari was born and raised here in Windsor. He was educated in Massey High School, went on to major in economics upon graduating with a Bachelor of Arts from York University. In 1985, he received his Master's in Business, his MBA, from the University of Windsor. And in keeping with his Windsor roots, he joined Freed's one week later. He served as the Chairman of the Better Business Bureau for two consecutive terms, and was on the Board of Directors of the Ottawa Street Association and the Windsor Chamber of Commerce. He has been a 20-year long-standing director of the Alzheimer's Society. And, most importantly, Ari is as successful in business as he is in life, which includes a marriage of 26 years and counting to his lovely wife, Pam, his two grown sons, Evan, a second-year law student and aspiring singer-songwriter in Los Angeles, and Derek, a senior at the highly acclaimed business hospitality program at Michigan State University. When I was thinking about what to say in my introduction, it dawned on me that Ari and I have been together for the past 50 plus years. I can't figure it out, I'm only 35. <laughs> Whether it was at preschool at I.L. Parrots, grade school at Roseland Public, high school at Vincent Massey, York University in Toronto, rooming together when Ari was in third year and I was in second year. Now that was something. The Frieda Norman families, we have been in business together for a lot of years. We have traveled together. We have celebrated holidays together. And we have lived our lives as one family all throughout. That was always the main concern of the founder of Freed's, our grandfather, Sam Freed. It was not how busy we were that was his concern. His main concern was that we always all got along, and we always did. But it was in the early 80s that we joined the Freed's team together to continue on as the third generation of this remarkable business that our grandfather started some 86 years ago in 1929. So I'm excited to hear the story today, the story here today that Ari is going to tell us. It's being told by my longtime business partner, my first cousin, and my dearest friend Ari, who wishes nothing more than to inspire many of you 
to either bring your business to the next level or to further encourage others on your team to do so as well. That is because, as Nancy said earlier, building better business stirs up our economy, helps create jobs, and drives us all towards success. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ari Free. Wow. I gotta tell you something. I haven't been this excited since my bar mitzvah. <laughs> Danny, thank you so much for that great introduction. Dan's not just a cousin. He's more like a brother and a best friend. Who better to, to, could I choose to do that introduction than Dan? Thank you so much for that. And Nancy, Nancy Duffy, who sends me a message on LinkedIn, how would you like to be a keynote speaker for me? Sure, why not? What was I getting myself into? Thank you so much, Nancy, the president of OJC Masterclass, for giving me the opportunity to share my story of, three, of a three-generation family business, the lessons that I've learned. So today, I'd like to ignite the power in you to succeed, not just in business, but also in life. But before I start my story, I want to thank all of you, each and every one of you, many that I reached out to personally and told me that they'll be there like that, people responded, we filled a room. It's truly a dream come true. And I'm very excited to be here with you today. So with that being said, I'd like to start with a story from my past. I want to take you back 14 years ago. As I was driving to the old stomping grounds of the Pontiac Silverdome, Great picture. <laughs> I was driving to the Silver Dome from my home 14 years ago, which was actually, my home was in West Bloomfield, Michigan, and it still is today. Let me tell you something. My life was good. Many of you don't know that I moved to West Bloomfield, and I moved there with very mixed emotions running a business, being involved in a family business, running a business with my cousin, partner Dan. There was a lot of mixed emotion there. However, after speaking with my wife, Pam, a decision was made and we made the move. After making this decision, I remember going to my father and going into his office at the store and saying, Dad, I'm moving to the States. Father, look up at me like this and say, you're moving to the States? Are you sure you want to do that? You know something, you're going to be a small fish in a really big pond there. I said, Dad, I don't care about being a small fish. I work a lot of long, hard hours Pam and I and the boys, when they were younger, we'd made the decision and we were on our way. Oddly enough, shortly after that time, which was around 1996, my life started getting even better. As I continued to drive to the Pontiac Silverdome on that bright, sunny day, I noticed and kept reflecting on things in my life. I noticed the Canadian dollar and how the dollar, similar today, was, was weakening. It had weakened to 73 cents, which was good for Freed's and good for Windsor and good for Canada in two ways. What were those two ways? Well, with a weak Canadian dollar, it kept the Canadians 
in Canada shopping, in dining and traveling, and it also brought Americans into the United States, in, the Americans into Canada, and also over to Freed's, obviously. So Dan and I started, re the first thing that we tried was a radio station that Dan and I both listened to a lot being sports guys. 11.30 a.m., WDFN, the fan. And on those spots, Dan and I would say something like this. Ready, Dan? I'm Ari Free. I'm Dan Orman. And we own Freeds of Windsor. <laughs> and then the commercial would go on, rate exchange rate, take the trip, it's well worth the travel. We received immediate results. In the first week, we, we started seeing customers. How did you come see us? Heard you on the fan. Another customer, how did you hear about us? Heard you on the fan. It went on and won, on and on. We increased the budget. We went on to Free Press. We went into the Detroit News. A billboard campaign. Detroit, uh, Detroit News, Detroit Jewish News. Started advertising at the Silver Dome. The fan of the game was brought to you by Freeze. We were at the Joe Louis Arena, and we also advertised at the Palace of Auburn Hills. We leveraged our position with famous sports celebrities. Look at that. To Ari, thanks for everything, Scotty Bowman. Who could ever imagine? One of the best coaches of all time came into our life and was a pitchman for Freeze. Wayne Fonts was our first from the Silver Dome. Steve Mariucci, Larry Brown, there's Larry right there. Guys coached more teams, made more, more millions of dollars than just about anybody I ever met. Rick Carlisle, there's Chauncey Billups. Even my childhood idols, the icons of my childhood, I had two of them. One was number nine of the Detroit Red Wings, Mr. Gordy Howe came into my life. My real favorite from the 68 World Series, Detroit Tigers, number 23, hit that ball, Willie Horton. All of these people became ambassadors of our store. I was really living the dream. We had great business models as well. Great leadership in our store. As Dan mentioned, from our grandfather, Sam Freed, to my father, Gerald, and to my Uncle Al. A loving family supporting me and a great support staff at Freed's. U.S. customers started coming to Freed's in droves. In my area, the suit department, we couldn't sell suits any quicker. We were selling up to a thousand suits at a time, and I remember calling up my suppliers and saying, send me suits, send them to me, just make sure the patterns are good. If I don't like the patterns, they're coming back. And rarely did I ever send anything back because we were selling them like hotcakes. See a couple of our retirees over here, Bob and Kenny, they can tell you all the stories about how many suits we were selling. I continued to smile as I drove to the dome, getting ready to outfit two guys in the new M&M era. Marty Morningwag and Matt Millen. Another losing season for the Lions. Some things in history just don't change. <laughs> then in an instant, a perfect storm entered my life. Here it came. Storm surge number one. At 8.46 a.m., September 11, 2001, as I was driving to the Silver Dome and listening to WDFN, 11.30 the fan, I heard that a plane had crashed into tower number one of the World Trade Center. I called my wife, Pam, to make sure everybody was okay. I then called the store. It was 8.46, it wasn't opened yet. The only two people that were there at that time were Joan Goble. Where are you, Joan? And Mr. Keith White. Where's Keith? 
<laughs> right there, and right there. I got on the phone with Keith, and I said, Keith, did you hear the news? A plane had just crashed into the World Trade Center. In Keith, white, typical fashion, he said, oh yeah. I said, oh yeah. But both of us really didn't think that much of it, quite frankly has to be some kind of an accident. So my day continued, business as usual. I met Dan at the Dome, and we waited to outfit Marty and Matt in the waiting room when we heard a scream from one of the female employees of the Silver Dome. Dan and I rushed to the area where the television was at, and we saw in amazement and horror that a second plane had crashed into tower number two. This was not just an accident. As we all know, this was an act of terror. The world's life changed. My life changed in an instant. I remember saying to Dan, Dan, you better get back home over the border. They may close it down. And sure enough, he was one of the last people to get over the border that day. In my particular case, there was no filming of the show. Everything got canceled. I drove back home to West Bloomfield in shock. The border became like Fort Knox. A fear of terror covered the world, and my world became filled with long waits at the border, declining sales, and U.S. customers no longer felt it was worth taking the trip over to Freed's. Then came storm surge number two. The demand for suits started to decline. Why? The onset of casual Fridays. Silicon Valley, dot coms, Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Amazon. The suit was falling out of favor. Casual Fridays became casual Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. My life wasn't so good. I hate to depress you, but then came storm surge number three, the 2008-2009 recession. The perfect storm continued hitting my world and the world of Windsor hard. Windsor, I think, had the highest rate of unemployment. The banking industry in the US allowed deregulated loans, put their economy in a tailspin, weakened their dollar, the automotive bailout, thank God for it, we almost lost Chrysler, Ford, GM. Could you imagine Windsor without an automotive world? Where would we all be right now? So our business went, and I remember talking to Dan and to Keith and to our other managers, and we'd say, you know what? Before 9-11, we're on the tip of the iceberg. Our business is only going to get better. We felt pretty invincible. So we went from a tip of the iceberg feeling to almost like a feeling of the sink, sinking of the Titanic. We were pretty concerned. John Ropak's in the room here somewhere. Can you raise a hand? There he is. John and Gary Turco asked if, we would, if Dan and I would like to attend a seminar right here at the Kubota Club around that time, put on by KPMG. It talked about family businesses. It showed family businesses and how the model looked. Was your family business model going like this? Was your family model going something like that? Or was it doing something differently? Well, at Freed's, our model for 71 years was going like that. And after 9-11, it started going like this. So, we saw the happy times. We saw the challenges, we saw the tough times. We went through a perfect storm. But in today's world of Amazon and big box conglomerates, we at Freed's still survive. We not, we, not, we not only just survive, we actually thrive. So now it's time, no more depression, it's time for me to reveal to you the secrets that I've learned in 30 years of business with Dan under the tutelage of our fathers and what we've learned to ignite the power in you to succeed in business and in life. 
Step number one, be positive. Honest to God's truth, when people ask me, how am I doing? I'll say things like, it's only 10.05 in the morning. I'm feeling great and the day's just begun. Or, I'm fabulous or I'm magnificent. And truly, I do feel that way most of the time. How do you respond? Was I always this way? During 9-11, with long waits at the tunnel, commuting back and forth, with downward sales and lower profits? No, I don't think I was always that way. So, what made me turn positive? Let me tell you, it wasn't easy. But what happened was those tough days turned into months. The months turned into years. And finally I said to myself, enough is enough. A decision has to be made. A sink or swim moment. And in our freed spirit, losing was no longer an option. Being around sports, you know, you gotta play to win. And that's something that we did. I started searching for answers. I started reading a lot of self-improvement books, business books, books on positive things in life. My three favorite books. If you want three good books to read, number one, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, written in the 1930s. Sold millions and millions of copies worldwide in every language imaginable. Incredible book. Number two, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And number three, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. These and other books help me deal with struggle and adjust my mindset. Besides these books, I'm blessed to have many positive role models in my life. One that only a few of you have met is my grandmother. And in the Jewish word for grandmother is Bubby. Her name is her name is Bubby Ada, her name was Ada Linden. Ada Linden, my mother's mother, lived to 104 years old. And I can tell you, up to 100, she was sharper than any of us. Her life spanned over three centuries. She was in the 18th century she lived, she lived in the 19th century, and she lived in the 20th century. If she couldn't sleep, that's okay. It gave her more time to do her, to to taste her cooking recipes, her potato latkes, her cheese blintzes, her beef knishes, and her salmon patties. We all tried them, they're delicious. When tragedy hit her life, she could accept it and just move on. And just like my grandmother, have any of you, I know some of you have, but you should all meet my mother, mom, how are you today? Life is good. It's wonderful. And I'm a very proud of You see? <laughs> my mother is one of the kindest, most loving, and positive people you're ever going to meet. Then there was our founder, Sam Freed. In 1929, Sam Fried immigrated from Russia to Windsor. He was able to speak bits and pieces of about 12 different languages, and he really knew how to take care of the customer. Can't tell you how many people have told me over the years, I used to caddy for your grandfather when my dad got in the business, but he was a very well-loved man, a very positive man. When my grandfather, Zadie Sam, as we called him, was working in the store. He saw his family working beside him and all the customers bustling around. He would say, ah, I can't believe it. I'm, I've got tears of pride and joy. He would call it a Yiddish word, meaning it's a fog in Eden, which was just such a pride and joy to him. And as Dan mentioned earlier, it didn't matter if we made a few more sales or if we had a few less sales, what was important to Sam was that everybody get along and be happy and be healthy. So remember step number one, be positive. Step number two, 
set yourself goals in life. I've got four of them that I wrote down that I work on every day. My number one goal is to be happy and to be grateful. My number two goal is to strive to always improve. My third goal, which Keith White could tell you, which Dan Arman could tell you, which a lot of the staff is now starting to tell you, is to make Freeze the best clothing store on the planet. And my fourth goal, a new goal, is to get involved in some public speaking, to get outside of my comfort zone, to try something new to help expand and improve myself. Three weeks ago, Mr. Dr. Vincent Georgie has allowed me the opportunity to speak to the MBA class at the University of Windsor for two hours. And today, here I am in a full house room. So when you're setting your goals, make sure you write them down. Make sure you surround yourselves with great people like we have in this room. And you will achieve your goals. Goals should be realistic. Goals should be attainable. Keep working on your goals. Work towards your goals with a positive approach each and every day. And you may just be surprised by the results. Remember, patience is a virtue. And you may actually be surprised that you not only reach your goals, you may actually surpass your goals. It just happened this last weekend in our trunk show. A team of great people at our store working together created a record sales event in our store this weekend. Step number three, work hard and never give up. At Freeze, we achieved this by using the ripple effect. Now the ripple effect is done this way. Have you ever picked up a flat stone and skipped it across the surface of the water and watched the beautiful whale waves rippling along the water top? That's what we do at Freeze. All those little ripples are all the little details in working hard and never giving up, but doing them step by step, one at a time, to achieve these results. Some of the results that we've ex ex now have achieved is our famous soup package. We've sold over 25,000 of them in the last eight years. On your table, you'll see Freed's Image Magazine. Tony Catalano and his team at Media Duo, who's here with us today, presented us an opportunity to advertise in another magazine. And we said, Tony, how about our own magazine? Is that possible? It was a dream come true. We now also have Freeds.com, where we're selling product online, a Freeds loyalty program, which continues to improve each day, and a community-wide I Choose Freeds billboard campaign. Several of you in the room, including Erica Kuchka and a few others, ambassadors of our store on billboards throughout the community. Did Dan and I have good role models along the way? Absolutely. My father, Gerald, and my uncle, Al, 60 years, 60 years together, and very rarely ever a harsh word between them. Now, Dan, as you mentioned, 30 years. Dude, we're getting a little older. <laughs> my uncle, Al, would say, he's maybe not as tall as he once was, six foot three, size 12 shoes, Four, size 14 shoe, six foot three. I remember as a kid, he picked me up with his hand, raised me to the sky like Simba and the Lion King, and I would be giggling, but I was giggling in pain because it hurt so much. A strong man. And he would take his finger and he could shake it at you. And he could say, as we've all heard at Freed's, you know what? If you love it a lot, it'll love you back a lot. If you love it just a little, it'll love you back just a little. Speaking of love, 
Who loves Freeze more than my dad, Gerald? Recently, a customer came into the store. It was actually Marty Comza. Marty, I kind of watched and was standing on the sidelines, and I saw Marty come sauntering over to Gerald in the suit department. It was September, a beautiful sunny day, Saturday. And Marty Comza said, Gerald, what are you doing in the store on such a beautiful Saturday? And my dad proclaimed, I'm here Sundays too! <laughs> what, better, what better mentor could I have in life? What better mentor could I have in life than my dad? From his meticulous presentation, Take a look, his perfectly coiffed hair, his sartorial suits, his high polished shoes, and his always detailed car. I can tell you, I watched a lot of them over the years. <laughs> these details, these ripple effects, not just in his persona, outwardly, but in the way he taught us to run the business. My dad kind of reminds me of the Wizard of Westwood. Does anyone know who the Wizard of Westwood was? I think I heard Pete Kuzumana saying John Wooden, probably Dan Devon too. John Wooden won 10 NCAA championships in a 12 year span. And there's a story from Lynn Shackelford, who was a rookie on the UCLA Bruins in the middle of that era who was getting ready to be addressed by Coach Wooden the very, for the very first time. Next to Lynn Shackelford was Lou Alcindor, now known as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. They were so anxious to hear what the coach had to say. And Coach Wooden said, gentlemen, let's get down to business. Number one, I want your nails trimmed. Number two, I want your hair to be short. And number three, make sure your jerseys are tucked in at all times. Shackelford looked across at all his teammates. Is this some kind of a joke? This guy's winning all these championships and that's what he's got to tell us? Well, the varsity players weren't laughing. And it took Shackelford some time to learn the ripple effect of the UCLA Bruins. Just in those details were the other details, like passing, shooting, dribbling, defense. At Freed's, this can be the merchandising, the buying, the selling, the tailoring, and working hard at every detail and never giving up. When someone says you can, can't do something yourself, you gotta believe in yourself and never give up. My best never give up story comes from the, my favorite book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. Now in that book, you can check this out on YouTube or you can get the audio tapes of Napoleon Hill, they're fantastic. And I'm gonna do my best Napoleon Hill imitation if you've ever heard him speak. Now he was speaking back in the 30s and 40s. But his story went something like this. And I need another sip of water before I tell it. He said, I have a son named Blair. Blair was born without ears. Soon after birth, it was realized that Blair could not hear nor, nor speak. I took Blair to the doctor. The doctor put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Napoleon, your son will never hear, nor will he ever speak. Napoleon Hill replied, now you listen here now, doctor. My son Blair will hear and he will speak. He went on to explain, I'm gonna work day and night, I'm gonna pray for that child and lo and behold, one day that son will hear and he will speak. And Napoleon noticed as the days went on and the years went on that suddenly his son was able to start hearing. And with the progress of hearing aid technologies and praying and hard work and dedication, Blair went on to live a successful life, hearing and speaking, like every other one of us do. So, remember step one, stay positive. Step two, 
set goals, and step three, work hard and never give up. Step number four, never, ever, ever stand still. If it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality doesn't work at Freed's. The basic principles laid down by Sam Freed still remain, but since 1929, we have strived to improve our store each and every day. Could you imagine Freed's being the way it was when it was called Sam's back in 1929 and we hadn't changed at all? In 1984, I was at the University of Windsor doing my MBA, and there was a very, very old, very wise professor by the name of Dr. Ralph Cowan. And if there's one thing I learned that sticks out and is embedded in my brain since my days at university was what Dr. Ralph Cowan had to say. And by the way, my father had Dr. Ralph Cowan as a teacher too 30 years earlier in 1954. <laughs> Dr. Cowan told us you must be proactive. Don't react in life, you gotta proact. I remember upon graduating from the University of Windsor MBA program, writing a song. I love Jody Rafool, his music, acoustic guitar, and mine's not nearly to the same degree. But I wrote a song parody, which I often do at the Freed's Christmas parties, to a Bruce Springsteen song called Fade Away. Now, please forgive me, Jody, for my singing voice, but the song went something like this. I don't want to proact today. I don't want to proact today. What can I do? What can I say? I just want my MBA. <laughs> so I add that little light note of humor so that maybe it will stick in your mind that you do have to proact today. You have to proact every day. Because remember at Freeze, we felt like we were on the tip of the iceberg. And if I could change one thing that we did, it was in Freed's past, it would be to never assume that the things we did will continue to get better and continue to broke and continue to improve just because. Just because things are working at one point in time is not a guarantee that they're gonna work in the future. There's no guarantees. As we learned, life can change in an instant. At Freed's, we'll never forget the home base. Talked a lot about the states in the beginning, but we will never forget our home base. Obviously, Windsor and Essex County region. Can I tell you how often and you feel it in this room, and you feel it in our store, and how we talk about it all the time, the love that we get, the love that we get from our customers, how much they appreciate. They're appreciating us, they're come shopping and spending money, and they're appreciating us. We are most appreciative for all the years of support, 86 years of them. So now I go on to my fifth and final step to build our fifth and final step in my five-step approach to improve in business and succeed in life. My fifth step is to build relationships. That's been a huge buzzword of mine for many, many years. It's most important to surround yourself with great people. And Dan and I have been blessed. You want happy, positive, energetic team players. Relationships that work can be a lot of fun, but they must be nurtured over time. Oh, my wife, Pam. I've been married to Pam for 26 years. And like all you guys and girls out there, you know you must work on your relationships and build on those relationships every day. I'm blessed to have Pam in my life I'm a lucky guy to have a loving wife who supported me all these years and through all that we've been through together. It's no different in business. From managers in the store, from our managers, make good relationships. 
to our suppliers, to our sales associates, and of course to our customers. Get to, get to know people, listen to people, learn from people, treat them well, and your life will be filled with happiness in return. We're proud to say that at Freed's we have a staff that has been working at Freed's, not working in retail or working somewhere, but working at Freed's for over 1,000 years. Relationships take time to build. They need communication, they need attention. I'm gonna just go into one last little story. Bob Miller, you get singled out again. One of the guys I called, you gotta to come to this event. This wasn't one of my first examples, but I thought it was a good one in building relationships. Bob will probably remember it when I start talking about it, but probably not at first. One day Bob called me over, about, probably four years ago, and Bob said, Ari, can you come over here? I, I can't shake this guy. I, I can't get anything from this guy. We just come over and see if you can do anything. Okay, Bob, I'll give it a shot. I walk over. How you doing? I'm Ari Freed. I'm on the owner of the store. How you doing today? I can't get nothing from this guy. Blood from a stone type of stuff. I go back to Bob after a minute and says, Bob, you're right. I, this guy, I don't know what to do. I said, Bob, we never give up at Freed's. Bob, let's go over there together and see if we can shake this guy up. We start going over there, slowly, nothing really happening. All of a sudden, I asked him a question. He was looking for a top coat. I said, what do you want this top coat for? He says, I want this top coat for when I go outside and I walk my dog. Oh, walk the dog. <laughs> what kind of dog have you got? I've got a dog. I show him my cell phone with the picture of my dog, Carmi. I've got an Australian Shepherd. What kind of dog have you got? I've got a German Shepherd. He pulls out his phone and starts showing me pictures of his dog. Bob, of course, trips in. I know all about dogs. Bob knows all about everything. <laughs> I know all about dogs, blah, blah, blah. Five, ten minutes of talking about dogs. Try on a top coat that he'd already tried on earlier when we first met him. Now what do you think of that top coat now? I love it, I'm going to take that. <laughs> End of story. So, build strong relationships. So there you have it. My five-step approach to how to succeed in business and in life. To go through a storm and come out on top. We succeeded, you can all succeed. A word came into my head, it just popped in when I was writing my conclusion, for whatever reason. The word, or the letters, were DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. That's deoxyribonucleic acid. Believe me, science is not my forte. I had to look this up and see what the heck is going on. When I looked, I noticed that DNA in the definition, a DNA molecule contains all the information necessary to grow, to build, and to maintain life. Well, we at Freed's have survived for 86 years. We use the sum of the five-step approach to grow, to build, and to maintain ourselves at Freed's. It's also in your DNA. So remember, number one, be positive. Number two, set and achieve goals. Number three, work hard and never, ever, ever give up. Number four, never stand still, be proactive. And number five, build strong and lasting relationships. So before I leave, I have one last question for you. How are you today? Fabulous. Well, I'll tell you something. My life is good. It was cold.
Oh!